Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would do probably this short little video. It's probably going to be around 15 to 20 something minutes long. It's probably not going to be that long. And I probably could have talked about this by myself. But the reason why I thought that I would review a video by Dante's Boxing Nation is because he's going to bring up some points that, in my opinion, that I not only wanted to talk about, but I thought was relevant to talk about. And this video is going to be about a couple of situations. It's going to be a little bit about the Vasily Lomachenko versus Devin Haney matchup. And also a little bit about the Isaac Pitbull Cruz and the Shakur Stevenson matchup. Not just about the Vasil Hightech Lomachenko and Devin the Dream Haney matchup, even though that is a very decent matchup and we will talk about that. But this video is mainly going to be about what, in my opinion, uh, overall, how good or how great of a matchup uh, the Isaac Pitbull Cruz versus Jacor Stevenson matchup is. And within that, I'm also going to be discussing, in my view, what levels of fighter that I see, or in my opinion, what makes a great fighter and a decently great fighter. Because a lot of the times, or at least some of the times, I get some of these guys that ask the question, and it's not a bad question at all. I certainly understand why some people ask it. There's some people overall that ask me, well, what do you necessarily mean by a fighter that is a decently great fighter? Because a lot of people, of course, when they look at a fighter and they call him great, you know, they think that that is pretty much on their own solid level. And I, I would somewhat agree with that. But we're going to talk about that overall a little bit later on within the video when I think that I need to. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about the Isaac Pitbull Cruz overall and that of the Shakur Stevenson matchup. And in my opinion, what I think about it. Let's see what Dante has to say. Let's tune in. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So the WBC has ordered a lot of title eliminator fights. One that stands out the most, at least for me, is Shakur Stevenson versus Pitbull Cruz. This is a really, really great matchup. Shakur and Isaac Cruz, if they both accept the fight, will be fighting most likely for Devin Haney's vacant WBC belt once he beats... Uh well, let me state this. And a lot of these LDBC and new media channels, especially channels that are big fans of Javante Tank Davis, they've been really trying to hype up Isaac Pitbull Cruz as if he is this super-duper dangerous contender. And don't get me wrong, he is a dangerous contender, but he's not really an A-grade fighter. Uh, at least in my opinion, until I'm proven wrong about him when it comes down to it. I just, I will not see him as an A-grade fighter. And I mean, I don't mean to sound arrogant or <laughs> anything like this, but the majority of the time, at least when it comes to boxing, I've been proven wrong very, very, a very little amount of times. It just is what it is. And when I take a look at Isaac Pitbull Cruz, I don't see him as an A-grade fighter. It just is what it is. Uh, I think that if you put him in the ring against Shakur Stevenson, then Devin Haney and, you know, Javante Tank Davis in a rematch and Vasily Lomachenko. I don't think he beats any of those fighters. And to be quite honest with you, I think it's even a stretch if he beats George Cambosis or Jermaine Ortiz. I don't even know if he beats them. I also don't think that he beats Ryan Garcia. Because what I see from Isaac Pitbull Cruz, I pretty much overall see, like, a lot of the times Dante, he'll talk about Canelo and he'll say that Canelo is this basic Mexican fighter. Well, then you really don't know shit about boxing. I mean, no offense, but it is what it is. A lot of people really don't know the difference overall between a great fighter and someone that's decently great and someone overall that is just good. And he's like Pitbull Cruz, in my opinion. He's just good. He's never going to be a fighter that, in my opinion, when he faces an A-grade fighter that is 100% at their best and in their tip-top shape, he's never going to beat him. It's no offense against him. He's a good, solid contender, but he's never going to be looked at as the best or even the second best in the division. It's never going to happen. He's, he's not on the level of those guys. I think that he's a fighter that, you know, makes a lot of people uncomfortable. He lets a, he puts a lot of pressure on people. But at the end of the day, do I think that he has the skill set or the boxing IQ to defeat someone like a Shakur Stevenson? No. Now, it will be a very interesting matchup, in my opinion, because in my view, he does somewhat have the style to beat that of a Shakur Stevenson or to give Shakur Stevenson trouble. But there are certain fighters that... Some people overall may not get this. There's certain fighters that have somewhat of the blueprint or the type of style that you need to beat that fighter, but they don't necessarily have it to the level of to where they actually stand a chance. And some people aren't going to get that. My point being is this. The way to beat someone like a Deontay Wilder, for example, is that you have to be someone like a Tyson Fury. 
You have to be a multi-dimensional fighter. Now, either A, you could try to back up the whole entire time, but mainly what you want to do against Deontay Wilder is stick that jab in his face and mainly overall get him on the back foot because if you do that, overall he's going to be very limited. Very similar to what I pointed out in the Dimitri Bivol versus Gilberto Zerda Ramirez matchup, but not everyone can do that. You know, there were certain fighters like a Luis Ortiz who tried to do that. And to a degree, he was able to be successful, but he's not Tyson Fury. And Isaac people, you know, Isaac Pipple Cruz, in my opinion, he's a good pressure fighter, but he's not a great one. I just, I don't see the multidimensional skill there. I see a fighter that, to be quite honest with you, in my opinion, he's, he's a good little fighter, but I see him as a one-dimensional fighter, in my view. Lomachenko, he's most likely moving to 140. Now, like and some people, of course, may argue, well, he was able to give Javante Tank Davis a very tough fight. Yes, but not only was that against the Javante Tank Davis, at least to me, that looked to have a left-hand injury, but on top of that, it also, I think, took Javante Tank Davis a little bit by surprise because I didn't, I don't think that he thought that Isaac Pitbull Cruz was going to be as tenacious overall or as tough as what he was. So I think that Javante Tank Davis, had he took him a little bit more seriously... I think that Devonta Tank Davis probably would have won the fight nine rounds to three. Like I said, Shakur Stevenson, he's already responded to this news, and he's on board. He wants the Isaac Pitbull Cruz fight. We don't know yet if Cruz is willing to take the fight because Cruz has recently been saying that he wants to fight the winner of Devin Haney, Lomachenko. And when I heard that news, I didn't take it too serious because we all know, once again, Devin, he's moving up to 140 after he fights Vasil Lomachenko. And I think Cruz, even though he was saying he wanted to fight Devin, he knew deep down that as well. But it's just so crazy because when I did hear this news, the first thing I thought to myself is, well, it makes more sense for you to be matched up against Shakur Stevenson for one of the vacant belts. And now that's exactly what the WBC has just done. You know, the best thing about title eliminators when fights are being ordered, we no longer have to worry about the network clashes, this promoter versus that promoter. It doesn't matter because once the fight is ordered, they have to take it to a purse bid. And whoever bids the highest, obviously, they get to host the fight. But I'm telling you now, if this fight does come to fruition, this will be a hell of a debut for Shakur Stevenson at 135. Your first opponent is Isaac Pitbull Cruz. It's a very tough fight. Isaac Cruz is tough for anyone. In fact, well, Isaac Pitbull Cruz, in my opinion, is tough for anyone unless you're a truly A-plus fighter. Now, I could be wrong about that, but once again, in my opinion overall, I just don't see a fighter that, in my opinion, is truly an A-grade fighter. I think that he's a decent contender, and I think that if you place him in the ring with lesser than A-grade fighters, yeah, he can beat those type of fighters, but he's never going to defeat the creme de la creme fighters. He's never going to defeat those guys, in my view at least. That's overall what I personally see with my two own eyes. It just is what it is. I do not see someone that's an A-grade fighter. But the reason why a lot of these guys try to promote him as an A-grade fighter is because, really, to be quite honest with you, Javante Tang Davis looked very subpar in that performance, which, once again, probably contributed at least to what I seen to be a little bit of a left-hand injury. And on top of that, I don't think Javante Tang Davis took him that seriously heading into the fight. So, it is what it is. But anyway. I, I believe Isaac Cruz would actually beat Lomachenko because Styles... Well, of course, you're going to say that, Dante, because you don't like Lomachenko. Now, now, once again, I could be wrong, and Isaac Pitbull Cruz could defeat someone like a Lomachenko, but I think that the way to beat Lomachenko, in my opinion, is that you have to have the style and the size of either a Jermaine Ortiz or a Tio or a Devin Haney, and on top of that, you have to be an extraordinary fighter. You know, I think that, in my opinion, that pretty much is the, proof, the blueprint, excuse me, to defeat someone like a Lomachenko. A lot of people, of course, take a look at the Orlando Salido fight, and they say, oh, well, Lomachenko must have big problems with pressure. Well, he has a little bit of problems with pressure here and there, but I think that Lomachenko has advanced, in my opinion, much further than what overall some of these channels are willing to admit ever since the Orlando Salido loss. And once again, a lot of the times, especially when it comes to fighters that they don't like, they won't put certain things into context, which is that that was Lomachenko's second professional fight, and it was against a fighter that was very rugged, very tough, and very experienced. So it just is what it is, but... Do I see Isaac Pimple Cruz beating the best version of Lomachenko? No. I don't even know if I see Isaac Pimple Cruz beating the worst version of Lomachenko. It just is what it is. But now that we're going to talk about that, I think that this is a good time, in my opinion, to explain 
what is the difference between a decently great fighter and just someone that is great or all-time great. You know, when you take a look at football, for example, and I'm going to be talking about Lomachenko mainly on this, but if you were to see mainly football, there are certain people that they may make the Hall of Fame, you know, when it comes down to it, to where if you take a look at Randy Moss, Randy Moss overall was a wide receiver that made the first ballot, but Terrell Owens made the third ballot. Now, in my opinion, both of those wide receivers are on the same level. But for the lack of another example that I can use, bottom line is this. There may be certain guys that make the Hall of Fame, but there's different levels. Not everyone, in my opinion, is all-time great or just truly just deserve the consternation or just deserve overall the title of great. Uh, Lomachenko, in my opinion, he's a decently great fighter. He's a fighter that if he overall is able to get a couple of other very big wins in his career, like Shakur Stevenson or Javante Tank Davis or Devin Haney, he'll be you know, on the great or all-time great level. But I think with the wins that he has, and they are very decent wins, I think that Nicholas Walters and Jorge Linares and Gary Russell Jr. and Gail Morgan, now those are all A-grade wins when he beat them. But there's a different level overall of facing guys like those guys and facing guys to where you truly have an opportunity to lose against them. And it's no offense against Lomachenko, but the last time that I truly seen him in a fight that he had the potential to lose, he didn't look very good in that fight, to be honest with you. Compared to his usual fights, he looked quite subpar. It just is what it is. And I was in the Tiafima Lopez fight. And I saw a lot of the same faults, in my opinion, in the Jermaine Ortiz fight. Sure, he was off for 10 months. But I also seen the same faults in the Tiafima Lopez fight. Now, who knows? It could have been a shoulder. In my opinion, I'm not going to go with that because I didn't hear anything about it going into the fight. So I don't want to hear about it. But it is what it is. At least that's my view on it. But that's what a decently great fighter is. You know, a channel that I really overall want to actually shout out here, which is a channel that I used to watch quite a lot and still do overall when I tune into his Patreon channel. But a lot of you guys may be familiar with this YouTube channel by the name of Chronicles of Judah 144. And a lot of his videos I ended up watching, especially about NBA basketball, because I thought that he would break things down very well. I thought very similarly overall to him, at least when it came down to it. And I thought that he broke it down very, very intelligently and very, very well. And what he used to say about NBA basketball is that, in his opinion, even though there's so many players that get called superstars, there's really only four level superstar players, at least in his terms. Because his definition of a superstar is a guy that can lead a team to a championship while being the best or the most viable player on that team. And he said there was only four superstar level players. There was Kawhi Leonard, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and there was LeBron James. And I agree with him to a degree, but he would also rank other certain guys and he would say that maybe these guys are bubble superstars. And what he meant by a bubble superstar is that they're almost on the superstar level, but they're just outside of that range. Well, that's kind of what I think about Lomachenko or a Devin Haney or a Shakur Stevenson or a Javante Tang Davis at the moment. They're almost kind of like bubble superstars or they're decently great fighters, fighters that are very close to being, you know, just on the title of great or all-time great fighters. But there's a difference because Lomachenko, in my opinion, he would somewhat be on the same level, probably above overall the level of someone like an Adonis Stevenson or again Morgan Dow or someone overall that, you know, maybe like a Carl Frosch. I think that he's greater than any of those fighters overall that I just personally mentioned. But when we compare Lomachenko to someone like a Canelo Alvarez or an Andre Ward, or someone overall like, you know, that of, I don't know, you know, whoever else you want to compare him to. Can we really compare Lomachenko to someone like that? You know, I, I don't know if I can really say that. Because if Canelo Alvarez were to retire today, what Canelo could have the pleasure of saying, what he has the right to say is that, you know what, even though I retire today and I'm not fighting anymore, you know how many A-grade names that I truly fought? And you know how even in some of the matchups to where a lot of people thought that I was going to lose or that, you know, there were certain matchups in my career to where, you know, I went up in weight and I handled my business against true, a repeated A-grade caliber fighters. You know how many fighters Canelo can say that he's done that against? He can say that he did that against Sergey Kovalev when he was an A-minus fighter when he was still the champion coming off of two, you know, victories, dominant victories. He can say that against Miguel Cotto. He can say that against Billy Joe Saunders. He can say that against Callum Smith. He can say that against Gennady Triple G Golovkin. He can say that against Arasani Laura, Austin Trout, Danny Jacobs. He can say that overall against Caleb Plant. He can say that against a couple of other fighters that I'm probably not mentioning. 
and whoever else he tends to beat. If he's able to beat Jamal Charlo and David Benavidez and maybe even some other names, those are the names that Canelo can say that he beat in his career. And some of those matchups, Canelo was not always favored to win or it was truly looked at as a 50-50 matchup. And it's no offense against Lomachenko once again. I think that he's won some very decent matchups. But did anyone really think that Nicholas Walters was going to beat Lomachenko when they fought? Did anyone really think that Guillermo yeah, Rigondeaux was going to beat him? I mean, there probably was. There was a certain amount of people that thought that Guillermo yeah, Rigondeaux had a very decent chance. I thought that Lomachenko was going to beat him, and he did what he was supposed to do. But the recent fight that I remember in reoccurrent memory against Tiafima Lopez, where I said, you know what, Lomachenko has a real chance to lose this fight. He did lose the fight, and he lost the fight probably about seven rounds to five or eight rounds to four. It just is what it is. So, <laughs> you know, it, it is it is what it is. Now, Tiafimo, in my opinion, was bigger than Lomachenko, but Lomachenko was supposed to perform better than that. So that's kind of where Lomachenko is, in my opinion. He's a fighter that, you know, the reason why I call certain fighters decently great is because it's a mix of the two. They're very, very overall great. You know, they're very greatly talented fighters, but because of the resume or because of what they have or have not accomplished yet, I can't have them just with the part of great. When you take a look at Canelo, in my opinion, it's obvious that he's great. He can be in the same conversation as overall, maybe even above that of a Miguel Cotto or an Oscar Del Hoya or Eric Morales or Juan Manuel Marquez or Marco Antonio Barrera. Canelo can be in that conversation at the end of the day. He can be in the same conversation as a Andre Ward. He can be in the same conversation as a Bernard Hopkins or a Joe Calzaghe. He can be in the same conversation as those guys. Lomachenko right now, in my opinion, is in the same conversation, probably a little bit above certain fighters like a Rigandau and a Donna Stevenson or Carl Frosch. He's above those guys. But if you're to talk about certain guys that are debatable top 50 or top 70 of all time, is Lomachenko really there? I don't know. I think that maybe he would make my top 100 fighters of all time, you know, but at the end of the day, that's why I call certain fighters decently great. So once again, Lomachenko has a little bit more to do if he wants to make that level. That's what I mean by decently great. Someone that has great potential, but maybe not someone that I would just 100% designate as great. So it is what it is. Definitely, man. And just to talk about both Shakur Stevenson and Isaac Pitbull Cruz, I think that Shakur Stevenson, once again, is a decently great fighter. And he's like Pitbull Cruz. He's a good fighter. Fights, and we know Lomachenko, he lost to Orlando Salido, who had a similar style, but was nowhere near as polished as Pitbull Isaac Cruz. So while, once again, Cruz will be a tough fight for anyone, I do believe Shakur Stevenson will definitely beat him. It will just be a very, very competitive fight. I mean, like... I'm not so sure about that. Uh, and that's not me saying that the fight would not be competitive, but I don't think that Isaac Pitbull Cruz has the boxing IQ, and I don't think that he has the skills to really compete with Shakur Stevenson. Now, who knows? It could be a very competitive fight. It could be about, you know, seven rounds to five. I think that at most the fight would end, end up around eight rounds to four, and I think that Isaac Pitbull Cruz will probably even be lucky if that happens. More than likely, the fight's probably going to end up around eight rounds to four, probably more nine rounds to three. I just think that Shakur Stevenson is way too skilled and way too smart. Weight is now officially the deepest division in all of boxing right now. So hopefully this fight really comes to fruition because it's a really good one. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars. But anyways, that's really about it for this video. I just thought that I would talk about that overall. Um, I think that it is a very interesting matchup. I don't think that it's really a great matchup. I think that it's a very good matchup. And a lot of people, once again, will disagree with me. But what this fight pretty much would be is if, like if Terrence Bud Crawford, if he went up overall to 154 pounds and he fought someone overall like, uh, well, <laughs> I really don't even know who to compare it to because 154, in my opinion, is not the deepest of the divisions. And I've had certain people disagree with me on that, but it is what it is. It would kind of be like, I guess, if Devin Haney went up to 140 pounds and probably fought someone like a Jose Zapata. It's a decent fight, but it's not really a great one, in my opinion. You know, it is what it is, because I don't really count Jose Zapata as an A-grade fighter. Someone that, you know, yeah, he has power, and, you know, he's a decent B-grade fighter, but he's never going to be an A-grade fighter. Just, it just is what it is. But anyways, that's really about it, in my opinion. Uh, it is going to be very particularly interesting, and if the fight does happen, of course, I will be watching and breaking it down. But I just believe that more than likely, Shakur Stevenson will be way too much. But that's really about it for today. Thank you so much for watching.
I'll talk to you all later.